All right, Lauren, hit me with it. What day are we on? 24. Oh, I got it. I was right. Excellent. This is Math 335, uh, support course for Math 35, Precalculus A. And we are going to do support for 14.2. Uh, that's the rational and irrational roots of polynomials. Polynomials. And this is day 24. And uh, let's see. Recall f of x if it looks like a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus one x to the n minus one plus we'll skip some terms a sub one x plus a sub zero. Then any rational roots. And what's a root for a polynomial? Can someone tell me that? Starting point, or a Not quite. Starting point is closer. A rational root is where it hits the x-axis or when y equals zero. And any rational roots of f of x uh, come in the form p over q, where p is factors of a sub zero. And Q is factors of a sub n. And Keith, bless his heart, came in on Saturday. And he was like a dog with a bone trying to answer the problem that we had finished with in uh, class last Thursday, because we didn't find any of the roots yet. We were just going all over the rules. And he literally went through every single root and found that, or every single P over Q and found that none of them worked. There was no rational roots for that problem, which is good. That's gonna save us some time today. We're just gonna start with a different problem when we start with the main class, because it takes a lot of sucks going through and finding out nothing works. Uh, but he actually did it pretty quick. He got to where he was grinding through on the calculator rapidly. So like when you get in a rhythm, you can get in a rhythm as long as you know what you're doing. So let's pick a different problem here. Let's see, we're looking at 14.2. Let's just load one up. Let's scroll down, get to some problems. Oh, let's see. Let's go with three x squared plus or six cubed plus six x squared minus two x minus four equals zero. This is number fourteen in our textbook. Oh, <laughs> the problem we did in class that had no roots. The problem is from the textbook, but is in the section just says list the possible rational roots, not find them. Oh. They kind of knew, like, I'm like, fuck it, we're just going to find them, not just list them. Oh, but I didn't realize it was a trap. <laughs> All right, so uh, how can I find my factors of what P can be, and what are the possible factors of Q? Uh, 
Plus or minus one is true for all of them. Mm -hmm. Two, four. Two and four. The number it actually is, in this case, the four, is always one of them, and one is always one of them. And then you got to look for any other numbers that multiply to make it. Four is two times two, so we have the twos. And we could have negative two times negative two, so that gets you a four also. Uh, and then what about Q? Three. 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 Three is a prime number. Any prime numbers, your only possible values are value in one. That's what this is the definition of a prime. They have no other multiples that make them other than their number and one. <laughs> so let's start writing combinations of these. And I'm gonna just go systematically. I'll start with the one. I'll start with P and I'll do everything over Q. And I'll start with two and do that over all the Qs. And then four over all the Qs. So, P over Q could be plus or minus one over one, which is just one. It could be plus or minus one over three. <laughs> we could have plus or minus two over one, which is just two. And plus or minus two over three. We could do plus or minus four over one, which is four and plus or minus four over three. I don't see any repeats here. So I'm gonna put these in order. Uh, the lowest number I see is the one third. Oh, one third. And then two thirds. And then I have one, and then I have four thirds, and then I have two, and then I have four. And we're gonna go the other way and just do those same numbers going backwards. That way we can put them in order and take advantage of any of the rules that we have. So these are our possible rational roots. All right, everyone ready? Let's take a talk about a couple of our things. The Descartes rule of signs, whether it's Descartes or Cartes or where the hell it is. I think it's Descartes because there's an S with a, it's a plural. It's possessive. <clears throat> Not plural, possessive. Uh, it mentions looking at the sign changes. And so like sign changes of F of X, how many sign changes does f of x have? I want to say three. Where? Um, the positive uh, x cubed and um, uh, negative uh, two x. So it changes sign from here to here, right? Yeah. Does it change sign anywhere else? Does it change sign on uh, three Q? Well, going to six, no. Oh. These are both positive. So these are both positive. These are both negative. So there's nothing from here to here. There's nothing from here to here. There's only one sign change if we leave it alone. 
So there's one possible positive reading. If I do f of negative x, this changes the sign of every odd exponent. f of negative x is negative 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x minus 4. And if we do the sign changes here, there's one there, there's one there. There are two negative roots possible. The total is three. Why is the total three? Without without that, why was why would there be three? Just looking at the equation, if we hadn't done Descartes. Oh, there's three signs there. It's one positive. It's based on the well. Without if we hadn't done this, you wouldn't have known that. You can still tell by the exponent on the highest thing. Great. Total possible roots is three. It's based off of x to the third. This is the highest degree or highest exponent. And that lists the total possible roots. <laughs> there might be less because they might be like you might have complex roots so they don't actually cross. So I've got one possible positive root and two possible negative roots. What numbers should I try for first? Yes, three more in one. No, hold on. Like, should I pick positive numbers first or negative numbers first? And if, positive. Why? Because there's only one positive. Yes. Is that a good reason or is that a bad reason? It's actually a bad reason. This is the idea. If we look at it, there are six positive numbers. And if I'm trying to capture and they're on the positive side and there's only one, one of them is possible, I've got a one in six chance of guessing correct on the get-go, right? On the negative side, there's two possible, which means I have two out of six chances. I've got double the chances of getting lucky right away and finding a good route. So always pick the side that has most, most possible routes. So here we're going to go negative. <laughs> what number is probably the easiest number to try here first? Negative one. Negative one. I would agree negative one because multiplying by one, even if it's negative, takes no thought, hopefully for anyone in this class. So we're gonna do our synthetic division. I'll put my exponents in there and I'll put my negative one out front. And we bring the three down and we multiply it. We add, we multiply it. We add, we multiply it and that's no bueno. So negative one is out. I'm going to double under or triple underline it to indicate that it's a it's a bad read. Why is it a bad root again? This needs to be zero. Okay, got it. Thanks. It's a great question. It's been a while.
All right, so uh, what's another good one I could try? Roberto, which number should I try? Focusing on the left side here. What's the easiest number to try? Now that one is out, well, what's the next easiest? Are fractions easy? No. So let's not do fractions unless we have to. Is that, are we agreed on that? Yes. That's opinion. Okay. So let's not do fractions unless we have to. Uh, so we've got negative two and negative four. I'm going to argue it's easier to multiply by two than four. Seem good? Yeah. Oh, I multiplied already. Bring the three down. Negative two times three is negative six. That adds up to zero. Negative two times zero is zero. That adds up to negative two. And I think we got lucky here. Look at this. We've got negative two times negative two is four. So we got a zero. So x equals negative two is a root. which means if x equals negative two is a root, I can write this as x plus two equals zero. And it means we can factor f of x. f of x, I'm gonna rewrite what it was. We can rewrite this as x plus two, the thing we just found. And then we're gonna write this as a polynomial of a degree, degree of one lower. So we had x cubed, we're gonna go down to x squared. We'll have a three x squared plus zero x. I'm just writing it in there to have it, to show where we got it. These are from the synthetic division. Yes. Bottom row. Now we could keep trying roots, but we're down to a quadratic. Okay. So why don't, rather than finding roots, let's just say 3x squared minus 2 equals 0. And you could use the quadratic formula, but when there's no, like, x term, I'm a big fan of just adding 2 to both sides. We've got 3x squared equals 2. Divide by 3. And we take the square root, and we got x equals plus or minus the square root of 2 thirds, which is not in its simplified form, but irrational, which means we found the only rational root with negative 2. And that means we can further break down f of x into x plus 2. Oh, how do I want to do this? Isn't it just negative 2 and then plus or minus so 3, the radical sign of 3. If I if I rationalize it by doing square root of three over square root of three, I get that, which is plus or minus. And then this could be three x equals plus or minus square root of six. Now one of these, I need a three x. So three x plus square root of six. And it's looking like I need the other one to be in the 
the three in the denominator form, because if I have a three out front on both of these, I would have nine X cubed if I multiply it all out. Does that make sense? It does. I can't have three here. No three in front here. So I gotta pick the other one where it's divided by three. X minus square root of six over three. And I'm guessing if we multiply that all out, we're gonna end up with a negative four at the end. Now this gives us a, a great opportunity to show something that I, I didn't mention in the other class because we're running out of time, but I'm gonna to mention today. We were we could have had two negative roots, right? Yes. I don't like where that's going. That's not a. Give me one second. There's a specialty to Descartes' rule of signs. It says you can lower them by two. But the argument doesn't seem to make much sense now that I'm thinking about it more. Oh, well, either way, we're good. So we found our roots. That's what we wanted to do. We found it. Ta-da! Well, that's our factoring. If I want the roots, x equals negative 2, x equals square root of 6 over 3, and negative square root of 6 over 3. And that is just, you all got to know how I got the square root of six over three, right? Uh oh. We had square root of two over three. And that's square root of two over square root of three. And you multiply top and bottom by square root of three. To, it's called rationalizing the denominator. And then, the so this ends up being square root of six over three. Um, would be uh, would be, uh, would be, uh, would be 3x square root of 6. How, how did you get that? The middle one? Yeah. Uh, well, I, do, you know, do you understand how I got the square root of 6 over 3? Yes. Okay. So then, we have this. I just multiplied both sides by 3. So from here, you would have 3x. I didn't have the plus or minus, but it's plus or minus square root of six. I went with the negative one. If I had, if I went with three x equals negative square root of six, and I add square root of six to both sides, that's how I got the three x plus square root of six. Okay. And the other one would have been three x uh, is positive square root of six. But we couldn't have the three. We saw that if we had the three, we'd have too big of a number. Yes. So I have x equals square root of six over three, and then I subtract it from both sides. So we can see where I got them. Yes, yes. The one was positive. Davis, they had uh, the badges from NASA and the Mesa Center. He uh, uh, Keith handed me yours. Is that home? I didn't I meant to bring it in. What do you mean you picked a few up? Like you, oh, oh, you pick, yeah, like yours, there's, like, there's only one that should have had your picture on it. Oh, the oh, was that at the no pass? No. Yeah. Like your visitor badge to NASA. 
You had to wear it. It said visitor. Did we have one then? I don't um, remember wearing one. I don't, I don't remember the place. Wow. Yeah, I don't remember. Fuck, Davis went to NASA High. I was like, apparently. Was all fucking like, I'm so what part. the fuck? <laughs> you took a photo for it. Yeah, I remember taking a photo. And it was all like clip on. It's, it literally looks like a sticker on a piece of plastic. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It had a clip in Yeah, okay. I mean, those, like, those are only visitor badges. What, what do like the official badges look like? They kind of look like they're, 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 they're like, like not yeah, quite but, driver's license. It's it's a piece of plastic laminated also with a clip. Oh, so but it's like more, it's not just a sticker. Yeah, it's, it's just a company badge. Yeah. yeah. As it's a regular company badge. It, an intern's badge is just like the sticker badge, except it's supposed to last eight weeks. It lasts eight weeks. <laughs> I wondered about that. I was like, oh. or like maybe if you had longer than eight weeks, like if it was a full full six month internship, they might give you something different. Yeah. But I don't know that they do. I think because of that, it's it's obvious by looking at that type of badge that this is a temporary badge. Yeah. Whereas if you have like a real work badge, like, you might be you might quit and it, it could if you didn't turn it in, easier yeah, to get it on campus. Yeah, yeah. And they don't want to give that to interns. Yeah, yeah, they don't, yeah, they don't want to give you guys like super official looking stuff. Right. <laughs> All right, let's try another. You guys want to try another? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, what are we gonna do here? Let's see, let's try. Oh, I wanna go back to that one real quick. Let's revisit this. Is there a smarter way to do this? Smarter way? Because we had to do the P over Q and list them all and try some numbers and do some shit like that. All the factor. Is there a smarter way? Could you, uh, could you use substitution? What would we substitute for here? Um, the the six, positive 6x and negative x. And, um, I'm gonna. I don't know that it will work with what you're going with. We did have how many terms are there here though? Four. We had a method for dealing with factoring for four terms, didn't we? We normally use it like separating a quadrant, had a quadratic and different things. But does that four term process work here? Can I group these and factor? Three to six and two to four. I don't know. Well, what do these have in common? Let's just let's just try. Yeah. What's the biggest great and greatest common factor for this set? Three. Three x squared, right? If I take that out, I have an x plus two. The greatest common factor here is a two. The negative two. And it would be a negative two, which give me x plus two here. So we have three X squared minus two times X plus two. And we bypassed the whole P over Q. So if we're so lucky in this situation happens, we can throw it out there. It's worth trying. It's always worth trying to find a quicker way. Okay. It does this one. Yeah. Right. And then, well, but then you have a really weird part of the three x squared minus two. Well, that's that's now it's down to a quadratic, and we can use quadratic formula or. Uh, can you just can you just plug three like something that's missing in the middle figure like into the quadratic formula? Yeah, you very much could, it, but it needs the right coefficient. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, what would be the right coefficient? Zero. Zero. Yeah, it's good stuff. In fact. B is That's how I originally wrote it up here. Ah. Because I pulled it from synthetic division. Synthetic division shows that zero right there. 
I was, I was up there working on the homework for this, and I, that one rounded me out pretty bad. I was like, like where are all these zeros coming from? We hadn't, we hadn't finished a problem in this segment. We're going over more 14.2 today. In fact, I'm giving, uh, doing it in the support class just to get some extra practice. Uh, let's see. Next problem. Nope, not factorable. Well, at least I don't know how to factor it. X. Did I write this down right? Yeah, I did. Do you want the clue that speeds this up some? X equals one plus I root two is a root. Like how is that fucking helpful? It's helpful, it is. This is a given piece of information. Oh, now we can just plug in for every X. That you didn't finish the thought, so I'm not gonna say yes to that. What do, you, what do you mean? No, um, I'm giving you that as an answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. I got the Lauren symptoms. <laughs> Longer. All right. If this is a root, I there is another root that we can find immediately without any work. The opposite of that. What do you mean by opposite of that? The minus one minus root. Right? is also a root. Yes. It's called the conjugate. So now we've got two roots. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is that we're going to do some synthetic division with complex numbers. What? No. What? No. Get the fuck out of here, Mr. Jones. Yes, yep. let's do it. Give yourself some space. <laughs> Those eyes are going to show up and fucking say, I want room. <laughs> one times I plus, or one times one plus I root two is one plus I root two. And if I add this, I have negative one plus I root two. All right, now I gotta multiply these. I strongly recommend you write it out. This is negative one plus I root two minus I root two plus I squared root two squared. I haven't finished dealing with anything yet. I just multiplied everything out. What's I squared? Negative one. It's negative one. So that part's negative one. What's squared or two squared? Two. Two. What happens with these? Well, they cancel. So I just have negative one minus one times two is negative three. Boom. So the thing about doing with the complex roots is every other time usually knocks out the eyes, but not always. I add that up, I've got negative seven. <clears throat> I 
This should be negative seven minus seven I root two. And now I have, if I add these up, I have seven minus seven I root two there. <laughs> Everyone good with what I'm doing so far? When you add complex numbers and there's no imaginary part of one of them, you're just adding the real the real numbers, the whole numbers. Yep. All right, so one plus I root two times seven minus seven I root two. This, I'm going to argue, is going to be 21. Because I should have a remainder of zero of one plus I root two is zero. But let's find out. I've got seven plus seven I root two minus seven I root two minus seven I squared, square root of two squared. All right, so we do have the I, I root twos cancel now, right? Those go away. I've got seven, and then I've got minus seven. I squared is negative one, and square root of two squared is two. So this is seven plus 14 is 20. Okay, so this was a fourth degree polynomial. So this is down to x cubed, x squared, x, and constant. And now we can do the one minus i root two version. I'm putting those vertical lines in to help make sure I keep some space for adding coefficients. <laughs> oh, I guess that is fact four. I like Descartes is just for narrowing down. Should we start with a positive or negative number? All right. Try. We just went through a set. You guys know how to do this.
a store and then they used to have a store not only in the parking lot oh, yeah. but right yeah. next to the cafeteria like is in the same building as the cafeteria i thought you guys had pizza in the cafeteria yeah, I know. Yeah, oh, oh yeah that was the cafeteria yeah. wasn't it? but okay. like if they're not if the cafeteria is closed there's no reason to keep that little yeah. merch store but like also if they're not generally having visitors on campus anymore there's no point in a merch store but there used to be like I don't know if they there it looked like a big domed building in the parking lot. I don't know if there well when I was there there was only one building in the parking lot other than the building you go to check in. Oh, oh yeah, at the, the beginning right up there, yeah, the check-in gate. Yeah. The check-in gate. There's the building where you check in, and then off to the right, yeah. there's this big building that looks like almost like a circus tent. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that used to be the the like gift store. It, it, it wasn't like a circus tent inside. Oh. It just had this weird structure on top. Yeah, was like, that's what I was really hoping for. I was like, man, I really look like a cat or something. I have to order them online. Everything's online these days. So. Right. Maybe because of COVID. Or yeah, I'm sure COVID fucked everything. I know COVID <laughs> fucked everything up at NASA. Oh yeah, they, they, they were even saying like how like a whole bunch of people never came back afterwards. Just work from home. Yeah, they're all just working. Look at that. This is fucking easy. I know, right? I was like, what the heck? <laughs> I gave you guys way too fucking long to do this. Yeah, that's like negative, negative. So it'll be x squared minus seven, right? Yeah. So I've got x. Minus one minus i root two, x minus one plus i root two, x squared minus seven. And then that would then break down further into being x, yeah, so x root seven. So here there was actually no rational roots. If we'd gone with p over q, we wouldn't have found it. None of these are rational. So no rational roots on this one. Well, root seven would be rational. That's irrational. Oh. It's only rational if you can form a ratio out of it without having a radical in it. So I mean, this is actually an unending number. Decimal. Yeah. Well, a decimal point's fine. As long as it's terminating. We can only, we can only process. Right, because I can always, no matter how bad the decimal is, I can always turn it into a fraction, which is a ratio or a rational number. Even 1.89765432199 nine again, but I can turn this into a fraction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 decimal places. I'm going to multiply this by 1 times 10 to the 10 over 1 times 10 to the 10. This gives me 18976543219 over 1000000000. Zero, 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 zero. Yeah. So that technically a fraction. Is technically a fraction and it's terminating. It's, it's it's not repeat it's it's a fraction it's a ratio. If it keeps going on, if it's a non-terminating number, you can't do it. Unless it's like a repeating one. Like 0.33333333 is one third. So repeating decimals usually have a fractional represent fractional form. And if you don't know what it is, your calculator will, will tell you what it is. All right, that's it for. Uh, and so, then, again, because there's no rational roots, there would not be a 